Imagine having intense headaches that last seconds, usually around the eye and on one side of the head, associated with these cranial autonomic features such as ptosis, drooping of one eye, conjunctival injections, lacrimation, nasal congestion, and rhinorrhea. Well, these types of headaches are known as trigeminal autonomic cephalgias and unfortunately thought to affect less than 0.1% of the population. They're called trigeminal because they seem to affect the distribution of where the trigeminal nerve innervates. The trigeminal nerve is a sensory nerve of the face with three main branches designated V1, V2, and V3. Autonomic pertains to the cranial autonomic features found in this headache, and cephalgia comes from the Greek uh, kephal, which is head, and alga, which is aches or pains. There are actually five main types of trigeminal autonomic cephalgias, and all share common features, but also common pathophysiology. The first to discuss in the pathophysiology is what's called the trigeminal autonomic reflex. The thought is that stimulation of the trigeminal afferents can cause cranial autonomic outflow. So pain from the cranium travels to the nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. From here, it sends pain information to the higher brain center where we perceive pain itself. The autonomic features of this headache suggests cranial parasympathetic activation, a trigeminal autonomic reflex. Activation of the parasympathetic nerves causes the lacrimation, rhinorrhea, nasal congestion, and eyelid edema. This reflex, you also get inhibition of the sympathetic fibers, causing ptosis and meiosis. So the trigeminal autonomic reflex is responsible for inactivating the autonomic nerve fibers as well, the parasympathetic and sympathetic, causing the autonomic manifestations of trigeminal autonomic cephalgias. The actual activation of the trigeminal autonomic reflex is thought to be caused in part by the hypothalamus itself, hypothalamic activation. The posterior hypothalamic region plays an important role in the pathophysiology of trigeminal autonomic cephalgias because these headaches display the following characteristics. Firstly, there is a relapsing remitting course, there is seasonal variation, and there is a clockwise regularity of a single attack. And this implies involvement of the biological clock, namely the hypothalamus, in the origin of the illness. The last theory is the vascular theory, where clinical symptoms of cluster headaches are caused by neurogenic inflammation of the walls of the cavernous sinus. Here, in part, we can say that the hypothalamic activation leads to trigeminal autonomic reflex. Hey guys, a quick word from the sponsors of this video. Now, preparing for the USMLE is a lot of work, and many students spend a lot of their time studying only a fraction of USMLE questions. Unacademy covers many questions with high-yield pointers, saving you time. Learn techniques on how to approach this sort of question with world's prominent educators in medicine. So subscribe today to Unacademy, link will be below, and get access to more than 800 comprehensive videos over 300 review lectures and over 3,000 question banks and much more for only one year. Remember to use the referral code Armando10 to get 10% off your subscription. It's a good way to start confidently preparing yourself for your USMLE. As mentioned, there are five main types of trigeminal autonomic cephalgias. They differ in their duration, seconds, minutes, hours, and days, and they also differ by how frequently they attack in one day. So, for example, one a day, eight times a day, or even a hundred times a day. Cluster headaches 
um, usually lasts minutes to hours and relatively low frequency, up to eight times a day. Paroxysmal hemicrania occurs more frequently, but at a shorter duration of minutes. Then you have short-lasting unilateral neuralgia form headache attacks with conjunctival injection and tearing, called sunct, or short-lasting unilateral neurofalgia form headaches attacks with cranial autonomic symptoms, or SUNA. With these headaches, they only last seconds with a frequency of up to 200 times a day. Hemicrania continua, as the name suggests, are constant headaches lasting days. Everyone with trigeminal autonomic cephalgia syndromes requires an MRI to assess for any other underlying pathology. Let's talk about each of these headaches briefly. So cluster headaches is the most common trigeminal autonomic cephalgia. It's so bad it's called the suicide headache. It is much more common in men. Cluster headaches uh, is characterized by recurrent episodes lasting you know, 15 to 180 minutes of severe unilateral periorbital pain with autonomic features. Episodes tend to last one to eight times a day in clusters lasting weeks or months, separated by periods of remission of one to two years. The mean age of onset is 20 to 50 years. Attacks may be precipitated by nitrates and alcohol. The treatment of cluster headaches specifically includes administration of 100% oxygen, usually via Hudson mask, for 20 minutes, tryptan, such as sumatriptan, sub, um, subcutaneously or intranasal. There's also bridging treatment, including steroids or occipital nerve block, and there's also preventative strategies such as using verapamil. Paroxysmal hemicrania are more common in women with a mean age of onset in the 20s, more frequent attacks with shorter duration, often responds selectively within days to endomethacin, a non steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. The main features differing uh, paroxysmal uh, hemicrania from cluster headaches are the higher frequency and shorter duration of attacks higher incidence in women, and the response to treatment with endomethacin. Sunct and Suna is the rarest of all trigeminal autonomic cephalgias. It's a stabbing, uh, lancinating, burning pain, frequency up to 100, 200 times in one day, duration are seconds, usually very brief, Treatments include lamotrigine, which is a type of anti-epileptic. Oxygen and endomethacin does not help with sunct or suna. Hemicrania continua is a constant unilateral headache on one side with moderate intensity. The frequency is daily with a duration of 30 minutes to days. It does respond to endomethacin. Patients can also receive uh, greater occipital nerve injections or block, as well as occipital nerve stimulation to help with the pain. In summary, in this video, we talked about trigeminal autonomic cephalgias, and there are five main types. Cluster headaches, paroxysmal hemicrania, sunct and suna, and hemicrania continua. Treatment does differ between each of these uh, types. Thank you for watching.